shall I send? Here I am, Lord. This is my Lord. I have heard you calling in the In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Well, a very warm welcome to this Holy Eucharist on the second Sunday of Lent. Uh, here we are back in St Aidan's Church today recording, and wherever you're uh, participating in this Holy Eucharist from, you are most, most welcome. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have wandered and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts we have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things that we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But you, O Lord, have mercy upon us sinners. Spur those who confess their faults. Restore those who are penitent according to your promises declared in mankind in Jesus Christ our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may live a disciplined, righteous, and godly life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, 
and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the prayer and discipline of Lent, may we enter into the mystery of Christ's sufferings and by following his way come to share in his glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so let's hear God's word. A reading from the book of Genesis. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you, and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you throughout their generations, for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations, kings of peoples, shall come from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we prepare ourselves to receive Jesus in his holy gospel. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. I am the way, the truth, and the life, says the Lord. No one can come to the Father except through me. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said this all quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If anyone wants to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Well, you know, I can't help but feel sorry for St. Peter at times. There he was, just living an ordinary life. Married man, family man, we don't know if he had children or not, do we? And getting about his job as a fisherman. But then he meets Jesus. His world is turned upside down and he gives up absolutely everything to follow him. And whilst he's undoubtedly the bravest of the apostles, I think he's also the most prone to blunders. Remember when he promises absolute fidelity to Jesus and yet a few hours later, he denies all knowledge of him. Just one example. Peter's heart is always in the right place, but he is prone to being headstrong, which usually ends up with him saying or doing daft things or getting himself into bother with Jesus. But what a guy to have by his side, eh? We can take today's gospel as another example, though, can't we, of Peter's proneness. We see Peter putting his size tens in it yet again. Jesus is teaching. He's teaching the crowds, but also with that and that, but he's very much teaching Peter and the disciples. And what he's doing, he's revealing to people more about himself, about what his mission is, and about what's in store for him, all in the hope that they'll be able to understand who he is, and that they'll be able to take on board what's going to happen to him and why it's going to happen. Ultimately, Jesus is revealing to them that he is the Messiah. And he's making them aware of the consequences of this, not only for him, but also for them, who he calls to follow him. Now, Jesus must have thought that this was the right time for this conversation, but he appears that he might have got his timing a little bit wrong. Because it's quite clear on this occasion that Peter and perhaps the disciples didn't quite get what he was saying. Hence the outburst and the outrage that is shown by Peter and by the disciples. And also the outrage that then comes from Jesus. But I think we need to put this passage into some sort of context. Remember that Peter and the disciples were Jews. Their people and their land was under Roman occupation. And the Jewish people's vision and expectation of the promised Messiah was the polar opposite of what Jesus' expectation and reality of the Messiah was. They looked forward to a Messiah who would be the great leader, the person who would free them from slavery, who would kick out the Romans, who would make Israel a great nation again. But this isn't the Messiah of Jesus. And Jesus knew that these sort of rebel rousing ideas could lead to revolution. And so I guess it's not surprising that Jesus often warned people, tell no one that I'm the Messiah. He didn't want to stir up trouble. He just wanted to teach them about who he was, and often that was via the hard way, but he also wanted them to discover the truth about him for themselves. But he also knew that he had to uproot their human hopes and expectations about the Messiah. And he had to replace them with the divine truths of who the Messiah is, revealed in himself. And so Jesus is telling the crowds, he's telling Peter and the disciples that he will be going to Jerusalem. And once he's there, he will suffer at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes. Now, these three groups formed what is known as the Sanhedrin, which is the highest court of justice for the Jews. And the people, and Peter and the disciples, would have been stunned then to hear what Jesus was saying. They could understand that the Messiah that the great leader would suffer at the hands of the Romans and of the Gentiles, but they couldn't comprehend him suffering at the hands of their own leaders. And so, up steps Peter, as that's often the case. He's the first to respond. 
You can hear him almost saying, almost shouting at Jesus, no chance. That's not going to happen. We're not going to let you suffer and die. Absolutely no way. We will not let it happen. Jesus is actually telling Peter off. Sorry, the other way around. Peter is actually telling Jesus off. And then St. Mark tells us that Jesus takes Peter to one side and turns the tables. He then begins to rebuke Peter, to tell Peter off. Now I'm sure that Jesus understood the good intentions behind Peter's outburst. I'm sure that he knew that Peter wanted to protect him. But Jesus also knew that Peter hadn't heard the totality of what Jesus had just said. And so that's why Jesus had to take him to one side, to calm him down, to get him to listen. You see, Peter only heard the bits where Jesus talked about his journey to Jerusalem and about how he would suffer and about how he would die. And Peter was so taken aback by this that he didn't then hear the bit about Jesus rising after three days. Peter completely missed the resurrection. And so what's Jesus' reaction to Peter? Well, it's almost like a verbal slap, one that shakes Peter to the core. Get behind me, Satan, he says, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human Peter, who Jesus has previously called the rock, the foundation, is now being likened to Satan. Can you believe it? It's a bit harsh, isn't it? But whilst Peter has been able to profess that Jesus is God, he's also failed to remember that Jesus is also a man and that the Messiah is of the human race. And to enjoy, endure the joys and sufferings of life and to die is natural to the human race. Apart from sin, the Messiah therefore will embrace every aspect of the human race, including death. But Jesus the Messiah is saying that because of him, life doesn't end in death. And that's the bit, the most important bit, that Peter and the disciples and probably the crowd didn't hear. So what did Jesus mean when he called Peter Satan? Again, let's put this into some sort of context. Jesus spoke in the Aramaic language and the word Satan in that language signifies an obstacle. And so Jesus wasn't alluding to perhaps the demonic connotations that we associate with the word Satan. In this context, Jesus using the word Satan, it was about that which gets in the way of God, the obstacle that gets in the way of God. And in this case, Jesus was saying that Peter was getting in God's way because he was trying to prevent God's will from happening by trying to prevent the passion and death of Jesus forgetting that that passion and death leads to resurrection. And in doing so, Peter is not only being an obstacle for God, for Jesus, for God's will, he's also been an obstacle for himself and for other people because he's preventing them from recognising the truth of who Jesus is by ignoring the resurrection. We ignore everything else. The ancient writer Origen translates, get behind me, Satan, as this. Peter, your place is behind me. In other words, Jesus is making it clear that Peter is expected to follow and not to try and lead him. And he says it in the strongest of terms when he follows it up by saying, if you want to be a disciple, then take up your cross and follow me. Ours is to follow the Lord, not to lead him. When we were baptised, we were all marked with the sign of the cross on our foreheads. The cross is our badge, it's our identifier. 
And at some point in our adult lives, we have to own that cross for ourselves. We have to enter into that personal relationship with Jesus, not because someone made a decision for us when we were too young to decide for ourselves, but because we now say yes to Jesus ourselves. Like Peter and the disciples, we are called to follow. We're called to live a Christ life like life. And the cross of Jesus signifies a journey of faith that ends not in death, but in life. And the cross is the sign of hope that we were with pride. Like Peter, it can be so easy for us to be an obstacle to God's will for ourselves and for others. To want things our own way and not his way. To trust in ourselves more than to trust in God. It could be so easy to forget that the cross leads to the empty tomb. Especially when we see or experience difficult times in our lives or in our world. And yet the reward of bearing the cross of Jesus, the reward of following him, is the promise of resurrection and eternal life, which is the crown won for us by Jesus. And it's the crown which he wants us all to wear. So this week, I'd like to invite you to spend some time with today's gospel passage. I'll invite you to put yourselves in Peter's shoes. What does it look like? What does it sound like? What does it feel like to hear Jesus saying the things that he did? When Jesus speaks, will you hear him speak about the resurrection? Or will you just hear the suffering and death bit? Ask Jesus to help you recognise the parts of your life that might be obstacles that get in the way of your relationship with him and with God. The obstacles that prevent your relationships with other people. The obstacles which prevent you from leading others to Christ. And ask Jesus to remind you that following and carrying his cross in this life will give you the crown of glory in the next. Amen.
let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. I say, God of our salvation, and if you want to join in, the response is we trust in your promise. Let us pray. God of our salvation, we trust in your promise. Jesus, Saviour of the world, you embraced the way of sacrificial love. Give your church faith and courage to follow you wherever it may lead. This morning we pray for all involved in communication in the diocese, for Preston Parish Church and as part of Vision 2020 we pray for the ministries of chaplains in our schools and universities. We pray for St John the Baptist, Broughton and the two primary schools associated with that church uh, Broughton in Amounderness and Forward St Peter's Primary School and Nursery. We lift to you Lord Braunschweig and all involved in ordination training in the Free State. And along with the whole Anglican Church we pray for the Anglican Church in Central America. God of our salvation we trust in your promise. Jesus, Saviour of the world, raise up leaders who will dedicate themselves to the common good. In the heat of conflicting convictions, keep them in truth and integrity. This morning we lift to you the governments of the world, all those who are involved in bringing peace in situations of conflict. We particularly remember this morning the Yemen we pray that your peace and justice will be brought in in that place. We also pray for Libya. We pray for all the refugees stuck in refugee camps in this global pandemic. We lift to you our own government and we pray that you would bless them, give them wisdom and open their eyes and ears to hear you telling them the way in which they should walk as they lead us, this nation. May your justice flow, Lord. God of our salvation, we trust in your promise. Jesus, Saviour of the world, in you, all peoples are one. Strengthen the bonds that create a cohesive and peaceful society. We pray for our communities here in Bamber Bridge and Wantley Dale, for St Aidan's Parish and St Leonard's Parish. We pray for those centres of community life. God of our salvation, we trust in your promise. Jesus, Saviour of the world, we look to you in our hour of need. Pour out your blessing on all who are ill or weakened. This morning we lift to you Kenneth Holmes, Sandra Booth, Anne Cullen and John Kitchener. In a moment's silence we bring before you any who we know who need your healing touch. Fill our hearts with your joy and gladness. 
God of our salvation, we trust in your promise. Jesus, Saviour of the world, in you we find truth and life. Do not be ashamed of us at the hour of our death. We give thanks this morning for the lives of Annie Frost, Eileen Halliwell and Malcolm Holmes. When you come in your glory, draw us home to be with you. God of our salvation, we trust in your promise. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Leonard, Saint Aidan and all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole of creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's prepare to share the peace. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. God of wisdom, may the light of your eternal word, our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, lead us in holiness and guide us to glory. We ask this in his name. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And now we give you thanks, because you give us the spirit of discipline, that we may triumph over evil and grow in grace, as we prepare to celebrate the Paschal Mystery with heart and mind renewed. And so with joyful hearts we echo on earth the song of the angels in heaven, as they praise your glory without end. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, as we remember all that Jesus did, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. 
rising you restored our life Lord Jesus come in glory Lord of all life help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth look with favor on your people gather us in your loving arms and bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Aidan, St. Leonard, and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O 
Almighty God, you see that we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We thank you, Lord, that you have nourished us with your word and sacraments, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet prepared for all peoples. Amen. Well, as ever, please do have a good look through the uh, notices. The main ones I want to bring to your attention again are obviously about, first of all, um, today, Sunday, between 10 and midday, both our churches are open for private prayer. Please do pop in um, to say a prayer. And also, when you're in there, you can pick up the uh, Diocesan Lent uh, devotional booklet, which is free of charge. Pick one up for yourself, take one and give them one to someone else. And you'll find in that little booklet uh, a scripture reading from each day from St Mark's Gospel and also a short reflection to help you uh, meditate on that piece of scripture. Um, and it's fantastic, isn't it, that we are getting ever closer to reopening our churches for public worship, which will happen in a couple of weeks' time on Sunday the 14th of March, which is also Mothering Sunday. So please, if you are able, if you're not shielding, please do come back to church and worship on that day for we will be celebrating Holy Eucharist again in both churches at the usual times. Um, look out for the booking system because unfortunately that will still be in place until we are completely free of all the COVID restrictions later uh, in the summer. We got a good start to our looking out in Lent, to our parish Lent course uh, during uh, last week. I think there's about 19 of us all together doing, the, doing the, uh, the, the course, which is great. All the sessions are standalone, so please don't think if you've missed the first one that you can't join in with any, any of the others. If you find yourself free on a Monday morning or a Thursday evening, you're very, very welcome to come and join in the discussion and the prayer, which is it's really good. It's not threatening at all. Um, it's just people, friends, uh, gathered around with a cup of tea in our hands, praying through some scripture passages and helping each other to make greater sense of what it means to our faith and to be followers of Christ. So this week's uh, session on Tuesday morning and Thursday evening is about teaching the faith. And Bishop Julian is going to be sharing some thoughts uh, from St. Mark's Gospel, uh, chapter four, thinking of through and praying about parables of growth and how that could help us in our own Christian lives of growth and our own efforts to be good, true and faithful disciples. I'll leave you to uh, read and digest the rest of the um, notices in your own time. Please, as ever, do share with everyone that you see. Let people know what's happening in terms of the prayer and other things which are going on in our parishes and that we are open again for worship very, very soon. Let's pray for God's blessing. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name Amen. of Christ. Amen. Amen.